Guten Tag, Challenge. Hello, it's Doctor, and I'm here and happy to present the semifinal for the Assault on Endor 2022 Star Wars Armada World Championship. And here we have an Imperial Fleet flown by Large Package versus Xantos, who's flying Separatist. I'm very excited to see this matchup here. Uh, let's kind of dive into the list here as they get started. So, uh, first and foremost, we have Large Package. He came first overall in the Swiss stage, and um, he did really well. Uh, he had 32 tournament points, and he did it with two ships, two activations. Uh, he's got six deployments here total. He's got a full 134 points of squads. Kind of typical squad ball, I'd say, except for the inclusion of Bosk. Bosk is pretty fun. So, um... I think that's pretty cool inclusion, and we'll see here as uh, what's going on uh, with how he got here to this place. So, uh, Large Package finished um, first in his group, and it was a pretty brutal group in which uh, he only scored 18 tournament points. Um, he picked up two big wins, but had a 10-1 loss. So uh, interesting to see how that happened. I wonder if he either, uh, I wonder, I wonder if he lost early and then kind of made some adjustments, mental like play style wise, or if it was just a bad matchup. Um, it'll be interesting to see. But then after that, uh, you know, it, once he got to Swiss stage, no problems. A big ten one over Broba Fett, uh, seven four win over Angry Ewok, and then two uh, wins to round out the other fifteen tournament points there. Um, all solid, seven and eight point wins there. Um, so let's take a look here at Xantos' fleet, his opponents. Uh, so Xantos has a Dooku fleet with uh, four activations and only 32 points of squad, so over 100 points separate them. But um, really the reserve hangar decks kind of help even things out a little bit, uh, but I mean I expect large package to kind of have his way with the squad positioning regardless. Um, Next up here, we got Xantos' path. Xantos, uh, unlike Large Package, took three wins in the group stage uh, but and also came out on top with 21 tournament points. Um, overall, solid, solid win, um, wins across the board here. And then in the groups, or in the Swiss stage, he lost to Schiapo, who, if you saw, Large Package had beaten. Um, so, you know, it may be, you know, Large Package technically has the transitive victory over Xantos. But, um, you know, they both beat PT-106, uh, so I think that's pretty interesting there. And, um, yeah, so Xantos finished with 30 tournament points and uh, that enabled him to make the top four cut. Uh, so now let's dive into things. Looks like they're on to deployment here. So um, uh, we'll, we'll get chatting about the actual matchup. All right, so here we are. We have... Uh, the fleet's mid deployment uh, looks like we're playing Ion Storm. Um, Ion Storm, if you're not familiar, is a fun, fun objective. Here is the very bad blow up. Uh, the second player places all obstacles, excluding the station, beyond distance five of both players' edges. When a ship that does not have an objective token ends beyond distance two of any obstacle or beyond distance one of ships belongs to the first player, assign one objective token to that ship uh, and then get rid of it if. That ship resolves a repair command. Each ship has the following critical effect. If the defender has an objective token, you get a victory token. And then choose and discard one command token from the defender. If the defender does not have any command tokens, defender defending hull zone loses one shield instead. So this is a really good objective um, in tournament settings. I'm not surprised at all to see this. Uh, you know, Dooku can navigate the raid, can navigate the repair, you know, once, you know... Uh, large package gets in range. So Xantos with a 12 point bid, massive bid, ended up uh, picking second player and this is what large package shows. So uh, let's kind of dive into here. I apologize if you see me zoom out randomly. That's me scrolling on another screen. Um, looks like the Gladiator deployed at speed one. Pink and blue deployed at speed two on the opposite side. Uh, blue is Tykes on the transport, and pink is the battle refit. Uh, 
Ah, so he's not deploying. He forgot about a couple squads. Classic. Um, yeah, so uh, feel free to let me know if anything looks wrong on my screen here, on my stream here. Um, uh, do, do, do. I want to mute this tab. I want to find so. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. Sorry, I haven't had dinner. I just got home, so I'm eating some cake. Seems like they're just chatting at the moment. All right, I got a little food in my belly. I'm just gonna test this. Oh, I need to sign in to do that. Um, I got a new computer, so not everything's configured on my end yet here, but I did my best in the past two days to get sh things set up. So, seems like, according to the large package here, Gladiator does whatever it wants to do. So, like, I predicted, you know, my video, I said um, in my preview videos, like, I'm not sure what exactly the Gladiator does. And uh, I wasn't entirely wrong. He, um, he doesn't seem like he knows what the Gladiator does, and the answer is, it does what it does. Uh, so, looks like here, I'm going to try not to move around too much. I have an addiction with moving the camera. Uh, so Recusant's coming down next at speed 2 instead of the Star Frigate. Interesting. That's the Patriot Fist, in case you are wondering what the title is there. So this is the Light Destroyer Recusant, you know, packs a wallop, but it is a bit light on shields, so it's going to be interesting to see how he flies here. I'm going to turn up the volume here. Okay. All right, so large package seems to be pretty indecisive here. Um, what exactly to do with that star destroyer of his? Does he? I think if he puts it on the on his left side, if he puts it on our right here, where he kind of has it, I think that's the worst play. But no, oh, he commits to it speed too. I think that allows the uh, the fleet to kind of focus in on that gladiator and take it out early, or come in and wheel around pretty well. So, but but given where the obstacles are placed, I actually don't think it's that bad of a spot. So maybe maybe he's kind of found a good hole in terms of uh, things here. Oh, there it comes to Muni. Coming in. And I think he's probably deciding, does he... I think... Hmm. So I think Large Package is trying to hit that gap between the front asteroid here and this asteroid on our right here. Don't worry, they can't see or hear me. Um, and chat, let me know who do you think is going to win. Um, 
so yeah, he's, he's locked into this spot here, speed two, so we're good to go. And chat, let me know who you think is going to win. Um, and yeah, looks like they're deploying dials. Uh, I'll uh, kind of leave it here for now as they get things deployed. So, Navraid comes out first. Even I'm on top of that. So, uh, yeah, Large Package does get, in fact, one pass token because he is first player. Uh, and otherwise, he'd have two if he was second player. And we are looking at uh, all right, so. ISD takes a squad token to start before bouncing forward at kind of expected. Um, and the Munificent takes a repair token uh, to get things started for the Separatists. The nav chart for this thing is just wild. It's so much fun. Yep. All right. You can really catch people by surprise if you are a... Uh, Separatist Munificent. Not like there's any other Munificents out there, but um, yeah, you can really catch people's surprise with them. They're a lot of fun to fly. I, I think Gar really misses out. I mean, you have a lot of the cool characters from the Clone Wars and Gar, but Separatists are just a lot more fun to fly. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Looks like, yeah, the Gladiator does not care where it went. Oh, bumping over Interceptor, Saber, Bosk, Merrick, and another Interceptor. All right. So, looks like the Gladiator's trying to cut it in and avoid danger. The Gladiator took a Squadron token, hinting at a Squadron dial next round. Oh, the tool's broken. Here comes the TI-99 Battle Refit. It's got a nav dial. Bumps up to speed 3. Gets that extra yaw there at the end. 
Just dodges that rock. Rakusent takes a nav dial. pretty funny how <laughs> uh, Xantos activates one ship and then he has to wait one time and then the rest are all his. So that, that's pretty funny. Um, so you can really schedule his activations well. Man, the tool keeps breaking for me. Wow, interesting. Okay. So yet, the Slicer Tools Transport has taken a nav dial and has taken Tyke's Repair. Yep. As expected, Repair Token there from Tyke's, so that way it can now uh, <clears throat> refresh that Slicer Tool and really get in there. <laughs> Clicked on Bosk's activation slider on accident. Okay, so I think he's kind of trying to decide how he should swing this a blue hard sell. It seems like if I had to guess, this Munificent has a navigate dial next turn to really maybe to. Eh, maybe not. Because I think I might want to squeeze between this gap here, actually. Essentially fainting. No, I don't think that's good. I, I think he wants to wheel, but... Yeah. He's probably got a repair. Um, Because, uh, yeah. Reasons. He's going to get shot. All right, so Tyke slows down, interestingly. I would have thought he might have stayed at speed two, but maybe he's up to no good. That Tyke's there with his slicer tools. So here comes the squads. So Jen did not first, as one might expect. So Bosk and Jenden pop up there, and looks like Vulture number one moving up. Again, uh, 
looks like here comes the squads. Just bringing them into range for the ISD. What are we looking for here? We getting this bad boy up here. So, like I said, sorry. I swapped computers. I'm gonna put that there because I can. So, the Armada podcast is a very fun podcast from which three Texans talk to us about Star Wars Armada, our favorite tabletop game. Uh, I check it out. It's a lot of fun. Learn a lot of things, and there's some really good players on the podcast. So Merrick Steele already locking down one of these vultures here. Screw you in particular. Darth Vader coming in. First dice of the day. Sorry, I said Merrick Steele earlier. That's cocked. Yep. And squadrons. No, the vulture lives. One haul. Who needs reserve hangar decks? <laughs> he still needs them. And here comes Merrick, your man Merrick. Intriguing. Yeah, I like So I think this this vulture here is the key component. If he because the raid is going to be painful for um large package here, but this squadron beam will come in and interrupt and basically say, hey, guess what? Next turn you can't do anything. Like, you, because you took the token last turn. It's going to be interesting. Unless. Well, no, there's no reason for him to pop the raid because he has the dial. Interesting. Or because he has the token still. So. Oh, no, 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 no. So, yeah. So, basically, he's stuck with that nav raid on those ships. Um, but the squad raid will be melted away. I'm a little intrigued this one didn't take a nav raid. Or nav token. But... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how things go. Things shake out. I'm still in deployment. I'm behind on things. Too many moving pieces. We're on squads. All right. Okay, here comes Saber. Trying to figure out what's a safe spot to go. Interesting. That's like risk getting popped by LTT. Linked turbo laser towers. While activating, while attacking the first squadron of an attack, don't read the activation part, that doesn't matter. You may add two dice of any color to your attack pool. If you do, you can't declare additional squadrons for this attack. On top of, sorry, that was on the wrong ship. It's on the munificent, but 
still reads the same on top of red black flak dice. This looks like that's in black range, I'd say. I think that might be uh four dice coming in at there at with a reroll coming in on it, this poor poor saber squadron. We'll see. I mean if he rolls red black right off the gate, you know, he's fine. Yep, Slicer Tools refreshes, as expected, at the end of round. And we're going to be bouncing up to round two here. I don't think he has anything to refresh. So Slicer Tools, I think, is going to be one of these game-changing upgrades here. So it starts uh, exhausted. Um, it was we're currently in the status phase around one here, which is why it's unexhausted. Um, oh, technically this thing should have a token, I think. Beyond distance to an obstacle. Hey, uh, do, does everything have objective tokens that should? So, um, oh, well, that's barely, barely, oh my goodness, look how close that is. Okay, so that's why I asked. I just want to make sure we didn't miss that. So we're on to round two, they're setting dials. Uh, in case you missed us earlier, let's take a look at these lists. Um, so let's take a look at Xanto's list here. Uh, I, I guess large packages, actually. Let's take a look at Squad Ball. So we got Bosk. You know, I'm not sure if he's actually going to be able to get his ability procced, but, you know, a blue-black on a rogue base, you can't go wrong with that. That's just solid damage right there. And... Um, yeah, here comes the squadron raid. Uh, so, so um, yeah, we're about to we're about to uh, see some squads. I can imagine. So. Bosk, Jendin, yeah, of course, he's got his buddy Merrick Steele. And then Darth Vader's here, of course, you know, the rapid reinforcements Vader's just so good. Um, Saber Squadron, three interceptors. So these vultures probably won't last long with all these interceptors, but I mean, hey, one survived Vader, so who knows? All right, let's take a look here. I think large package is ready to go for round two. Starting with the ISD, is EWS the front arc here. He's clearing the raid token with that squad token he took last round. But he still gets five squadrons. So there we go with the dial, and here comes squad two on the one that's just outside TI-99 here. Looks like Saber's getting relayed. So shooting the previous one health one, won the Vader shot pre last round. Killed the one health one. So 
looks like reserve hangar deck was used. So it comes back. Looks like it's coming back here on the recusant. Uh, recusant's reserve hangar deck. So we still have one reserve hangar deck left for him to use. Here comes another interceptor. Interesting. Shooting the vulture in the rock. We shouldn't have a reroll. Okay, so we are so swarm you're engaged with. <laughs> Two damage against that, yeah, no reroll. So another one dropped to one. So this is uh where's he getting four? You only activated three. Oh, this is the fourth. Okay, so here comes four or five here. Merrick has. Yeah, Merrick has grit, but grit doesn't prevent you from attacking ships. So you could attack the Muni here. So, so Merrick Steel will be rolling uh, blue, black, black. Just roll it, buddy. So, Mer so Merrick Steel has this ability. You can just roll it. Yeah, so he kills the Rock Vulture. So RIP Rock Vulture. He does still have a reserve hangar deck. Yep, there he goes. Can he stay there? Oh yeah, yeah, that's just the one. So Merrick will take a damage he braced. <laughs> All right, here comes Jenden. All right, well, you got to roll for that one. So blue, black, black here against the vulture that just came back from the grave. Killing the vulture. Kabah! All right, that's our first points of the game, everyone. Eight points for large package. Woo! All right. On the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Xantos was temporarily confused because he thought Jen didn't attack something with blue, black, black. All right, so here comes the Star Destroyer moving. He's concerned about the double arc, but he does have EWS, so it's not a huge concern.
So I'm going to guess he has a repair dial coming up next. Given he's looking, he's looking to hit these rocks range. And then he's probably going to repair whatever shields he loses here to these upcoming attacks. Uses Ozzel to slow his speed to one, I think. Okay. Stayed out of range of the blue, which is pretty good. And stayed out of the double arc, which so it's just a singular red. Excellently done by large package there. What a move. Um, you know, using Ozzel, keep it slow. So maybe he doesn't have a repair, because I don't think he's in range of those rocks. Oh, wrong side. Okay. Another vulture died. Fleet two, this one died. And which one takes one? Three hull takes one. All right, so that's 11 points there for Xantos. Squad back game evened out. So now here comes the shooty shooty. Man, I... So he looks like he might be going to LTT Vader first. Three damage. Rerolling one with the evade. Stays a hit. So Vader takes two after bracing. So we have regular flak time, and you can hit boss, which is nice. Kills the one health interceptor, and Santos has taken the lead. Saber. Oof. Dice. Dice crapping out. Yeah, you can get boss. I'm surprised he didn't shoot the gladiator. But I get wanting to kill Vader.
especially because you know, given that it's, I may, might have wanted to start with the recusant. Oh, because yeah, he's so he passed on Bosk because of the uh, the his ability. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what he moves. Uh oh, rut row raggy. That might be. Yeah, that, that looks like it's gonna hit. That's gonna hit. This. Yeah, I'm a little surprised this thing had a squad command. That's not going to help it either. It's pretty much wherever you want to be when you're hitting the rock. This might... That's illegal. Yeah. He's not He's not very happy about this. I'm, I'm inclined to agree, but more so from the activation. This is just an unfortunate circumstance. I, I don't think I, I agree with... Yeah, a nav dial here would have been pretty clutch. That clips the rock. That's the fr cannot resolve. Crit oh, that works out for this objective. So, um, targeting disruptor cannot resolve critical effects. I don't know why they just didn't drop effects and resolve to their own lines uh, when they printed this card, but that's just old school FFG, I suppose. Um, so we have a hull damage, the first hull damage of the game, coming from a rock. So that, that worked out. So he is double arced technically, but it's into the side arc, which he can't shoot. So, um, yeah, here comes Gladiator. Squadron dial on the Glad. So he clears the raid, and now we'll be throwing some squads around. Here comes Vader. Shooting the fronts. I, you know, thermaling Vader might not be a terrible idea. Yeah, I like I like thermaling Vader in this circumstance here. Blank a hit. Pedic reroll one hit. Kind of risky. Uh, let's see here. So he's got two vultures left. Five, three, six, three, four, seven. Two threes. Oh, he's salvoed Vader. So Vader's down to three hull already. And three. And he only has one defense token left. And canceled the red hit here with Sana Lore's redirect with the redirect. So that puts the Muni at full reds. Not like it matters a ton. Whoopsie. 
And yeah, now the gladiator's moving, and this is why I'm. This is this exactly is why I am surprised. Xantos led with the star frigate because now the gladiator knows where it, you know the muni is and kind of can set up some safe things. It moves out of Patriot Fist. Um, yeah, I'm 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 pretty interested in as to the decision to let it go. Because, uh, yeah, this is a great spot. I, I mean, I think it's double arc, but it doesn't matter because the obstruction here, uh, from here to here, I don't have my Telestrator set up on my stream setup. So, like, this doesn't matter. This double arc does not matter because it's effectively shooting into this rock. Um. So, really, if this Gladiator can get out of long range... Um, and it's pretty good. It's in a good spot. Like, Dooku's in trouble. I didn't expect to say that. I kind of expected, I mean, I guess due to the objective, he can't. But I like deploying my munis on the back line of the deployment zone. So that way they're not in this spot here where they're a little farther up than they want to be. Uh, so this is a good move here. I think this is a yeah double arc. Well done. State Patriot Fist is up now. Navigate dial. All right. A lot of blanks here for Santos with an LTT reroll into, oh my gosh. So three damage from front into the side here. Yeah. Oh, he burns the evade completely to avoid taking the uh, ion storm effect. Wow, that's bold. I did not expect that coming. So there's two critical effect or two crits in there, and he just burned the evade. Takes one on the side. The, the accuracy locked the brace. Whoa, what's going on? Oh, sorry, my computer's wonking out. Um, I'm surprised he didn't take the dial. What's going on with my computer here? Computer, stop wonking out. All right, so confire dial for the battle refit. All right, so Merrick Steel was getting attacked here. And he added the Concentrate Fire in to deal three to Merrick. That was a bold move. All right, so Merrick Steel down to three hull. Now out of the front into the side. Man, he's rolling his blanks into blanks. Um, so he braces to one and takes it in the side again. And Merrick steals down to three hole. And fleet two. Let's see what that is. (laughs) 
An inside turn here actually might not be bad. See, I'd prefer... Oh, there you go. That works out. So the ram at speed two, three. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a that's an overlap. So so they are at. One hull less a pop, the two of them, after ramming. So Slicer Tools takes an, has a navigate dial. And takes the nav token with tykes. And misses on the hit. And shoots Merrick for a hit. Merrick is low, 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 low. Alright, so Merrick taking that hit. Brutal. Um, using this navigate dial... I put trans spot, not transport. That's on me. I can't type. Um, there we go. So this thing probably wants to. So it needs to get like past the star here, uh, if it wants to get into slicer tool range. And what do you slice it to? Navigate might be the least impactful thing. He's trying to swing it around and hit the gladiator, I imagine, there. But ultimately, I think the right move... I'm gonna that away is hitting uh, slicing that star destroyer getting it away from the squadrons i mean merrick steel will probably activate once at least next round but your muni can spin out interesting i would have just bopped up to speed two Oh, I think he's... Because he took a Navigate token. Interesting. So, yep, we're heading to round three. And we will refresh these tokens. So, no evade for the Gladiator. I think that's the big thing there. And ah, Patriot Fist is now objectivized. I don't think it matters a ton, but it does turn him into a tasty target. Uh, to quote large package, um, I don't think the side arc actually hits anything. I think the side arc crosses the line. Oh, no, the side arc hits this, so it can hit that. So. So. So many rulers. Um, so basically what we're looking at here is I think m large package is looking to determine what ships he wants to go first. Try to figure out that activation order. Um, he's got a double arc on the Gladiator. 
uh, which I think is interesting. Um, He only has a single arc on the Munificent, which is why I'm a little surprised he didn't bring the hard sell in. You know, gambit it. You know, hey, look, I can take... I guess he did it because he, didn't, he took a Navigate token for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe... Yeah, why did he... He wants to hop up to speed three? I, I'm not entirely sure why he took a Navigate token. Um... An engineering token just would have made sense. You pop up, you turn in here, you just get in range three. So that way, for whatever reason, he gets to add a blue die to this attack too. That, that's something to keep in mind. Wow, this front to front or front to side, technically even, I think, maybe. That's one thing I don't like about being a spectator. I can't draw lines. <laughs> um that are invisible to only me. Uh, yeah, I'm a little surprised by this here. But overall, I think the only thing that's hurting them the most is the dice. Overlapping their obstacle hurt or whatever, but I think the dice blanking as much as they have has been quite the disappointment. For me, even. I want to see damage. I want to see explosions. So, uh, so right now Xantos has taken a bathroom break. So we'll take a look at his list here. So I'm gonna pull this down here. You don't need that. Uh, so we got Dooku, Wat Tambor. So I don't think the Muni is as dead as it seems, especially because he can pull shields away from these wonderful shield carriers, otherwise known as hard cells. Um, I should maybe clear off this information. But um, what we're looking at here is a very tanky boy. And he is at close range. So he will have the ability to reroll the point defense ion cannon. So I think. This shot here is here. So it looks like he's back and he's going to Dooku. So uh, enjoy the list here for two more seconds as I uh, do. All right, so he's still signing the dials. <laughs> Um, he being a large package. So yeah, so I think if Rekusen's pro or if we're going to see the Gladiator go first. It's got a repair. Interesting. I'm not surprised at all by this, actually. I should think about it. So he clears that Ion Storm token off. And heals up the hull. Now it's time to shoot. Oh, Merrick steals down to So he's shooting front and two side. He's got external racks here. Interesting. May have considered thermaling. That's a great roll. Four damage. I guess he might be saving it for L Star Destroyer. Does have that. Use external racking, racking them externally. It 
Six damage. Front to side attack here. Braced and took the damage on the left side. Now here comes the side attack. Three damage. Redirected. So, and salvoing. One, two. Two damage on the salvo attack. And he takes. That's smart. Saving the salvo for that side attack where uh, Seventh Fleet can't help him out. I'm surprised he didn't try to move those shields to the front. I guess he's moving past him now at this point, so it matters little. Oh, uh, he, oh, he did. He did. He did redirect it. Okay. I think he changed his mind. Still bamboozle me. Good move there. Ozzel speed three away. And he speed up to two last round, which is what I missed. So, uh, Sonalor. has repair and uses the token and steals two shields from the rear of the battle refit. And it gets the back. That's dangerous. Someone hit destroy an axe. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that's a clear front to side there. Um, not even obstructed. So I'm not sure what the confusion was. But anyways, that move cleared the gladiator out of the way of the hard cell. So Unicent here has to repair. He has four points plus two from the token plus. Uh, Watt Tambor getting four points, so that's 10 engineering. How does one spend 10 engineering points? Um, you know, you can spend eight points to get them onto. Oh, he healed the hull. So he's, he's determining he So he he moved one, healed two. So that's five. So does he heal the hull? Interesting decisions, man. So many interesting decisions. Okay, hull and shield. So he clears off the, the critical effect. Puts on... One on the side, three on the front. Ah. Misses Invader. Oof. That's not what you want to see. That is really bad. Oh, but Vader burns his evade, so he braced it. Vader down down low. I'm surprised he didn't 
Flak Merrick. The side to back of Gladiator for three red. Oh, wow. Okay. There's the good roll. Five damage. So he braces and burns the redirect. Uh, so no more redirects. Got a brace. And so five to three. And then he took the damage as two and one. I'm surprised he didn't put all the shields. That's the double arc. Because <laughs> the worst case scenario is he hits the rock and he stays double arc. This is broken for us. Oh, he does. Clips. He stay. He gets out of the front arc there. That's nice. Before attacking a ship, remove a die of his choice with damage munitions. So the rock is doing damage here. So this is a critical that was just dealt by two San Alor. This actually works out well for San Alor because now it's actually at close range. So um, it's only taking four dice. It's got three hull, and it can now um, use Pedic to help out with that damage mitigation. So I think that actually works out uh, for the flagship of Dooku, the Count of Serrano. I think that's where he's from. Feel free to correct me in chat. I, I want to see people chatting. I have a thing in my stream and I want to see if it works. Um, oh, I spent the pass token. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Goodbye, pass token. All right, so Patriot Fist. On fire tile coming in. That's four damage. He's making the double arcane attack. Interesting. I he's more trusting of his red dice than I. Takes a hit crit, burns the brace, uses ECM, goes to three damage. Oof, structural damage coming in hot here. So no brace. The red dice finally come through for the Patriot Fist killing it. So it does not escape. The 78 point gladiator is toast, but it's only 78 points, not a ton. Do they even do squads last round? They must have, because they're all blue. That's 100 points even for Xantos. First kill of the board. Here comes the closing Patriot Fist using the nav token at this current move speed. Remember, you don't need victory points really. It's it's whoever has the most wins. So. Patriot Fist burns his token, navigate token. Doesn't burn it, he uses it with 
great deafness. And I forgot to give it one to begin with, I guess. So I don't have anything to do. I'm speed two now. So that's a fact of life. And yeah. ISD is squadroning, clearing the raid. So yeah, so this is the side to side attack here. Is that we're deliberating? If we, uh, Xantos is deliberating if he uses the glorious thermal shields, but it would result in a burnt brace. And the reason why is it's five dice before, three dice after. I'm not sure if it's, yeah, he holds off on thermals. Uh, he does have point defense iron can. He does have Watt Tambor. You know, there are plenty of things there. Solid roll, three dice. Leading shots, three roll the red. Stays a blank, but three damage. And there is a pedic reroll. Point defense ion cannon. No criticals come in. And he takes the three on the front. Um, worked out well there for the muni. I, he had three shields on the front. Ignore what I had. I must have minus it. So he's shooting now the hard cell for red. They're both speed one, so no quad battery turrets. There's a really good roll. Um, gonna want to clear. He uses the evade and the brace. And two damage. So, he braces down to two damage there on blue. So now Ozzel's moving. Uh, the only ship left. So, Seventh Fleet Star Destroyer. It does not matter anymore. This no longer has a repair token. That's on me. I don't think anyone has tokens right now. Oh, well, technically the blue heart cell does. I'm just I'm, like a nav token of all things is what's confusing because this is guaranteed a nav dial. So the fact this has a nav token, he took a nav token with Tykes last round. Just surprised. Then not even concentrate fire, you know. Not a squadron. I'm just, yeah, that that move perplexed me. But now he can slice. I guess slowing down makes sense. Um, but taking the nav is what doesn't make sense. But now he can slice next round and clear out that squadrons. So that way the muni can escape no problem. This guy can maybe hop away to speed three. He drops to speed zero because... In, oh, so he can stay at long range. Interesting. Speed zero on... I like that move. I like that move. So flax, the dial, concentrate fire from pink. Uh, Alright.
So that just deleted Merrick with LTT in the dial. And flacking the interceptor out of the rear. Two damage, killing the interceptor. It took a damage previously that I. Oh no, it didn't take a damage previously. So it's at one haul there. And I will mark. I'm going to update the score. So. on Vader. Vader is splodied as well. So that's 25, so that's 47. Yeah, that's a clip on Saber, so attacking Saber and Confire token reroll. He took Con straight fire with Tykes. And then the double arcing shot, so Saber's down to two hull after three dice rolls. Okay, so now he's deliberating. What does he do with his navigate dial? He's locked in. He doesn't have that nav token to speed away. Interesting. Intriguing. Sliced into a repair. I think he might have a shot on that front arc still. The interceptor is attacking first. He moved. He's, they moved just outside of T ninety nine range. So interceptors can possibly get away with this. Yep, he gets away with killing one. All right, that's another dead vulture. So that's another point, set of points there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So Bosk still at full hull. Oh, we're going to save. Bosk coming up, shooting the rear. Interesting. Surprised he's not shooting the front of the Muni, but I guess it's got Watt, so. Oh. Yeah, so they're they're Mac changed his mind. Yeah, I think he was there too. I Yeah, so TTS won't let him drag and drop. So the, he's within Jenden range is basically what they're checking. So, okay. So yeah, so... There we go. So blue-black... The front of the Muni, that's two damage. Reroll in the blue. Stays two damage. Ooh, what do you do? What do you do? I... 
I mean, wow. Okay, so he burns the salvo to act as an evade and stays at two damage. That's unfortunate. All right. So we have two damage in the pool here. So he ditches the redirect to put the two damage on the right side. Vulture time, trying to deal one damage to that Coral Interceptor failed. Failed to deal damage there. Some Jendin. Oh, the counter missed too. Okay. So Jendin's activating boss or triggering boss here. One damage. Sorry, I up there we go. Oh, uh, PDIC, save that. Sorry, I was presumptive, PDIC. <laughs> so P uh, Saber does, in fact, deal damage to uh, Muni out of the, in the side arc. So I tools is, is exhausted. It's interesting, interesting, interesting. What will happen next on Dragon Ball Z? Because as it stands, the Muni dies. Large package will actually win, barely. What needs to happen, he's trying to see if he can trigger this. It can't, can't. He's pretty upset, I think, Xantos, is that this Vulture is out of range. Because this Vulture being out of range means it will die, furthering the damage area, uh, or the, the point spread here, should Dooku die this round. Dooku's chilling at a mean four hall. Uh, we're entering round four here. Um, uh, EWS has moved to the right side. Um, so I'll take a look there. Yep, and so. And we're all good here. No longer has a token. All right, so what's next here? Fleet one. Oh, uh, using the restroom here. Um, so I'm going to check my math here. So uh, what's dead? Uh, well, the Gladiator one is dead. Gladiator one is supposedly worth 78 points. So 56 plus. 62, 66, 71, 78 points. Yes, that is 78 points of Gladiator 1. Dead. Darth Vader. Dead. 25 points. Merrick Steel. Dead. 21 points. Two Interceptors. Dead. One remains. That's a total of 147 points. On the opposite side of things, we have Santos. Oh, wrong Xantos thing. There we go. Um, Xantos. Everything lives except three of the four vultures. So that's how we got our 24 to 147 points. Um, and let me clear these outs here. So first player 
is large package, and he actually has a chance to take the win here if he can get this kill. So we... Yeah, so we can see the front of the heart cell. Um, so. so he's speed zero. So he's going to be throwing a lot of dice here. Nine dice to be... Wow, oh, that was almost a lot of accuracy. <laughs> um, yeah, so good thing he's leading shots. Um... Rolls all those. Oh, that was a wonderful reroll. So six damage. I think that's enough to kill. Yeah, straight up dead. Straight dead. Wow. Man, that was wild. What a roll. What a reroll. I can't see the underside of that. Uh, Slicer tools is seven points. So, I mean, I have the title on here. 56 point hard so that doesn't sound right all right so he's cleared out he has used thermals two damage coming into the front arc here Rerolling the blue crit. Stays one damage. Three damage coming in. That is not good. Save one. I burnt the redirect. That's right. That's on me. That is worth 56 points. All right. So he's trying to hit the ram here. I think he has it uh, with this. I think that's definitely going to hit this chunk here. So... 56 is 80 points here. Yeah, this is not looking good for Xantos. These di the dice have been adding up. Three rerolls of a blue die were all hits. Or three rolls of blue die were all hits against Bosk, and he just needed one of them not to be a hit. Brutal. I think that turn at one is ample. But I'm not 100% sure. He, I think he might be trying to win bigger. Oh, but if he does turn... Well, he... No tokens anywhere. I think this rams. No, it doesn't. Oh, and he gets to move Bosk. Brutal. I was wrong. I'm not wrong. Frequently, but I'm I'm wrong a lot, especially when I play. Um, oh, and he moved out of EWS. Oh, that's the brutal part. Yeah, from that at repair. So he did repair, and he is within range. Um, lessons learned. Xantos is realizing he maybe should have repaired first. That's what he said. Uh, rated repair instead of navigate round one. So we're deciding what will go next. So that is in medium range. Not like that matters a ton, it, but still triggers Patriot Fist. Um, I think he's trying to determine the order of operations here. Um, 
Because if... I don't know what rec the Patriot Fist has, but it will probably want to pop out to the side. Ultimately, the goal is, I think... If this is a navigate and kind of can do a Mr. President get down thing, that'd be ideal. But losing it would cost him the win as it stands. Um, yeah. Rakuten has a constant fire, so yeah. So really, it's trying to get his most. What a roll! Oh, that is great. Oh, he does have Brunson. He had a red in there. So, Brunson was used, and Raider acting contain, taking damage on the left and the rear, and save. Ooh, that is very tight. Two shields off the recusants, that's clever. On the left. So it heals up the one damage here on the Muni. Moves one shield to the side, which is already there on my... Man, I'm just behind on the Muni. He, he moved his shield, so... There we go. I'm backwards on one thing. Here we go. There we go. Let's see here. Front to side here. Or front to rear. He braces to three. And redirected. Burns the contain, takes three. All right, so it's repair from Sana Lore. I, they're going really fast. I think that's what you have to do. I don't think he can fit any other way unless you ram again. Ooh, that might. That would be double arc. Be double arc. Double arc. Yeah. So I think you gotta. I think you gotta go the other way. Missing. What's nice about these arcs, though, is if you point. Oh no, maybe not. Yeah, you want to point butt away. Ooh, is that a double arc though? Ooh, close. Okay. Hard cell battle refits. Oh, 
front. Good roll. LTT. Stays a blank. Three damage. Takes three on his flag. Oh, yeah, I went under. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I think that clears. So two more there on. So that's there. Stays in place. Battle refit and Iraqis in each take a ram damage. Yep. So three hull. Yep, boss going for that side arc there, that juicy, juicy side arc. Blue black here, trying to get the most out of Jenden. Is that maybe what's happening? Hey, the black P deck here. Oh, he needed that. Xantos needed that big time. Yeah, now he's going to shoot the vulture. Oh, it lives. Oh no, things are going wrong really fast here. It finally kills that dastardly interceptor. So counter comes in and kills it. So they trade on the counter. All right, so. So that's 11 and 8, so. 158 and then 88. One, one arc, or uh, one hull damage there from Bosk on the Jenden attack on the side. And Muni's left side is the one that takes the damage. Okay, so. Munificence flying this way. Will it fly off the table? Will it live? Find out next time. Dragon Ball Z. Alright, so it does get its brace back. It will be able to... What's it called? Um, Fleet 1. Squad dial on the ISD. All right, Bosk attacks, dealt one, uh, two, Dooku. All right, Saber hits, but Pedic says no thank you. Saber's leaving to not die. Thermals was used. There we go. I was expecting this. That's a PDIC. Does boss kill Dooku? No. Uh, I would have. Oh. That's a kill on Dooku, so 129 points. Two hundred seventeen. Ooh, 
I think the interesting. I think they missed something. Um, he's trying to run. See, recusants are so good at chasing things down. Well, that's exactly what he wants. Patriot Fist. That's Concert Fire. Locking the brace. Well, and that kills the Star Destroyer. So he pulls it out. 183 points. That's 400 points. Boom, boom, boom. Destroyed. All right, let's calculate the score. Let's see how good my math was. Oh, my math is so good. Math skills off the charts. 400 to 217. Xantos, 1159. Takes down large package. The king of the Swiss. Um, so Xantos will be moving on to the elimination finals here. Um, you know, only took four rounds for this guy in the top of four. Uh, a good game, fast game. I love to see it. Um, you know, makes my life easier. So they're talking strat here. Um, basically, large package is saying maybe he should have gone for the recusant with the gladiator instead. Yeah, and then saying putting the EWS on the side instead of the rear was a mistake there when it got popped after turning. Yeah, no, I think I think large package did quite well given this matchup. Sorry, I'm listening in here. EWS. It would have been a win. So he's saying if you put EWS on the on the rear, you have been skedaddle. Yeah, that was a good game. Um, so let's talk about who Xantos might be playing next round. Um, we got Forex here. Forex is bringing a Doniger list, also with Bosk. Bosk is coming back for revenge, potentially. Um, so Forex has Ramadi, two uh, red beam test beds, and then a uh, singular Comsnet Gazanti, and then 127 points of rogues, two fire sprays, Morna, Vader, and then Jonas isn't a rogue, but he's there 
to be very precise, laser painting the target. Um, and the target will be Patrick's list. So Patrick is bringing Radis to the battlefield, and Radis is bringing MC80 Star Cruiser, kind of typical Mon Karen build you might find um, in in this world. But uh, Radis has you know torn far, has engine text to really get that MC80 out as far as possible and hunt things down. 400 points, so I'm interested to see uh, what Forex takes uh, first or second. Forex and Patrick are actually brothers. So, you know, battle of brotherly love. They already played in the tournament. You know, they probably practice against each other. This is a frequent matchup here. So it's going to be interesting to see um, how, how Forex handles it. He says that Patrick usually has the upper hand in practice. And then obviously they won their matchup in the tournament. So it will be interesting to see what happens with, um, you know, the Forex versus Patrick matchup. But in either case, I think I like I like Patrick a lot against Santos. You know, Patrick wants to go first. He, you know, he's Radis. Santos wants to go second. Folrix bringing Doniger wants to go first. Santos wants to go second. So like we're seeing large package wanted to go first. You know, like we're seeing three first player fleets really, um, and. They're uh, very comfortable playing first player. Um, they're going to be very uh, very well off, I think, against Santos. So um, it's going to be interesting to see, especially with that Ramadi test bed. Ion Storm is, that we just saw from Santos might be might be a tough matchup there. Um, but Patrick, I'm not sure what Patrick would pick. I didn't take a look at the objectives out of fairness, but... You know, Patrick being able to get that Star Cruiser deployed without that objective token is pretty potent. Um, those that squad ball is pretty potent. Um, you know, it can really go to town on the flank of something. And then uh really that yeah, the Sierra ninety A is one of the few things that can outrun that Rekizen. So it's gonna be interesting to see what uh uh, who wins the Forex Patrick matchup on Friday night, first of all? Um, so check that stream out. And then it's going to be interesting to see how they match up against Santos here, uh, who ended up winning with Dooku of all player of all commanders. So Dooku finally doing some work. He's he's taken a bit to show up, but um, you know he's showing up. I think this is a very fun list. It's uh, I think it's very well balanced. I think people lean a little too hard into some things with the Separatists. So it's good to see that, like, oh, let's all splash some squadrons, splash some utility, splash, you know, dice add and dice fixing, and um, this is what you got. You know, you have a little bit of defense, a little bit of offense. Um, so I, I think this is a wonderful list. I love the fact that it's 12-point bid, and it's doing well, and then we're seeing a bunch of fleets. We are just we just saw a good spread of fleets across the 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 gamut here in terms of points. Uh, this is actually kind of almost like a perfect smaller sample size representation. Most fleets had half the fleets in the gold league had 399 bid or 400 bid. Um, I think 17 out of 32 to be exact. So we got two of those. And then we have one sitting at the mid nineties with a, a large package here. And then we have one with um, that's chilling below 390. Xantos. So it's interesting to see. Um, you know, it's good to see. It, it means that the game is living. The game has uh, has a lot of life still in it. So uh, I'm excited to see how everything shakes out uh, on Friday night and then obviously in the final. So uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the matchup here between Large Package and Xantos. Uh, Xantos obviously coming out on top. I mean, uh, I'm not terribly surprised by the result, but it did look in doubt there for a bit. And uh, Large Package did have the ability to um, to pull it out. But unfortunately, you know, some things went wrong there. You know, had to put EWS on the rear. He could have um, pulled away and, and probably possibly stayed alive. It, not sure if he would have been able to kill the Munificent, but... um. That's definitely a potential 
threat there. Uh, maybe a little more extra turn of Bosk shooting things would have helped. But um, would it have actually helped because of thermal shields timing? I don't know. Uh, so Xantos, he didn't play a perfect game, but the dice were pretty far against him. So good job there, bud. Um, way to stick with it. And yeah, overall, great game. Thank you for watching. Um, again, tune in Friday night uh, where we have the finals, and I'll have that recorded and hopefully uploaded to YouTube. Thanks for watching.